Hi and welcome to Tech Tuesday at Phytech. My name is Mike Sullivan. Today we're going to be talking about how to mount the oxygen sensor. The oxygen sensor measures the amount of oxygen in the exhaust system. A lot of uh, oxygen means that the system is lean, not enough fuel. A low reading on an oxygen sensor means there's too much fuel. So we want to get the proper amount right around 14.7 to get the engine running good. The mounting of the oxygen sensor is important because we don't want water to collect in the O2 sensor. Now, for demonstration purposes, we've got this set up in a vise. All right, I'm going to temporarily mark this as the top. We want the oxygen sensor no more than 90 degrees from vertical, from the top. You don't want to mount it down below because water can collect into it. The uh, oxygen sensor should be mounted at one of the banks of the V8 engine. Uh, if you have two oxygen sensors, of course, you're going to have one in each bank. If, let's say this is a collector. It should be mounted two to six inches from the collector. and. It should not have an open exhaust system, it should be a closed system. Because any open exhaust system will give the O2 a false reading. We do not recommend it for zoomy headers, obviously, because you're only on one cylinder. Alrighty, I've got the pipe marked here as for demonstration purposes for where we're going to mount the O2. Let's start off with an eighth inch drill bit. Just get a pilot hole going. Make sure you got safety glasses and gloves on because you got sharp metal. Switch over to a bigger unit bit and go up another size on the unit bit. All right, you got a good size hole for the O2 bung. Now the kit comes with clamps and a uh, gasket, which you can do this without having any welding. Uh, just install that right over the hole. So now the gasket will provide a leak-free seal and uh, the O2 will, will thread right in there. Use the 7 8 wrench to tighten it up. We're gonna take the clamps off and we're gonna weld it on this time to show you guys the how easy it is to weld. Alrighty, all you gotta do is center it over the hole that you've already drilled. The hole's a little big, but it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm gonna tack it in two places. Now that I've got it tacked, I'm gonna come along and finish it up. Alrighty, that's what it looks like. Now that everything's cooled off, you can thread the O2 back in here. Should start and roll in by hand. Do not force it. If you have to force it, something's wrong with the thread, or you've got it cross-threaded. Okay, just snug it down. Now, the O2 comes with a heat covering, but this is not meant so that it lays on the pipe. Try to keep it at least an inch away from the hot exhaust. Uh, you don't want the wires inside over overcooking because obviously they're just, you know, normal wires with a heat covering. Here are a few useful tips to make sure everything works correctly for you. The Phytech Ultimate LS kits are available with dual oxygen sensors. It's important to note that the oxygen sensors have to go into each bank independently, driver and passenger side, and that also the injector clips must also be connected correctly for driver and passenger side. If not, the fuel loops and will diverge eventually. Um, if you see one bank going to 21 and the other going to 10 to 1, you may have the wires crossed either for the injector harness or the oxygen sensors. But they have to match, so passenger side injectors are controlled by the passenger side oxygen sensor and uh, driver side accordingly. The Phytech Retro LS system is a throttle body injection system for your LS engine. It is available with dual oxygen sensors as well. The difference is we're not going to control bank to bank air fuel ratios with that, but we are going to read it. We can average the two readings together into a combined air fuel ratio for 
controlling the fueling. On the FITEC port injection systems, if you're noticing one bank reading much different than the other bank, it might be an injector issue, it could be a cylinder misfire, it could be a sensor issue, it could be an exhaust leak. So if the bank to bank air fuel difference or the trim or the learn is different by more than say 8%, there's a good chance that something's wrong with a, maybe a vacuum leak or an exhaust leak, possibly an injector, uh, an injector connection or even uh, a leak near the sensor. With the Phytec LS port injection systems, and if you're using a single turbo, place the oxygen sensor after the turbo. You don't need to use two oxygen sensors because if you put them both after the turbo, they're reading the same air fuel ratio, but trying to control two different banks. So if one reading becomes a little bit different than the other, one bank may go rich, one bank may go lean based on controlling systems trying to fight each other. The main idea with using an oxygen sensor is to read what's coming out of the engine as far as burned air fuel mixture. We adjust the fueling based on what we're reading, but we also have to change our target air fuel ratio based on the load conditions. So for example, maybe at idle we're going for 13 and a half to one, at cruise maybe 14 and a half, and full throttle 12 and a half, maybe 12.6, 12.7 depending on how risky we are. With a turbo, we're gonna to have to go richer for piston cooling and other engine parts cooling. That may be 11.6, 11.7 at full boost. But uh, other than that, it'll interpolate a target in between the different load conditions and different RPM conditions so that you can have an ideal air fuel mixture under all conditions. The oxygen sensor needs to be in the exhaust without any leaks nearby it so that it gets an accurate reading from what's coming out of the engine. If it's too close to an open exhaust pipe, the readings will be skewed. The oxygen sensor also reads what's coming out of the engine, but what goes into the engine is based on our sensor readings and if they're messed up, say the MAP sensor is not reading correctly or a coolant sensor is way off, it may actually be injecting the base value incorrectly and using the oxygen sensor to correct for that but ideally you want the sensors to read correctly so that everything's working optimally. Cylinder misfires are another big fault that can skew an oxygen sensor reading. For example, if your plug wires are burnt or if an injector is not working or if you have a huge vacuum leak near one cylinder in particular, that cylinder may misfire and pump a lot of air into the exhaust and causing the fuel loop corrections to go uh, higher trying to compensate for that extra air. The oxygen sensor circuitry on the computer can detect faults. It can detect if the sensor is disconnected, it can detect if the heater is broken or if it's shorted or open, but it cannot detect if the sensor is fouled with oil or carbon. The oxygen sensors are used to put the engine into what we call a closed loop, so that will have a fuel trim that will adjust the fueling based on what the sensor is reading. It's active as soon as the sensor warms up, which could be around 10 to 15 seconds, but don't worry, it's gonna be controlling itself from idle to full throttle all the time. So it's gonna be seeing the air fuel mixture coming out of the engine and adjusting the fuel going in so that we get the right safe and economical amount of fuel going through the engine. The oxygen sensor readings can be used for tuning as well. Some parts of the system don't have learning such as when you hit the accelerator. So the throttle opens, a big rush of air comes in. Air fuel mixture needs to change very rapidly, but you may need to make adjustments on your handheld to the accelerator pump to get a fairly stable reading coming off the oxygen sensor. You can use the sensor readings to see, does it go lean and tip in or rich and bog? Either way, you can make adjustments with the accelerator pump settings. Some people are confused, what are the numbers? A number that is less than 14.7 air fuel ratio is actually rich. So a number say 11 and a half is super rich, 12 and a half is about for max power rich, 14 to 15 will be your economy areas, idle maybe 13 and a half to 14 and a half, maybe leaner for a really big cam if they're having a lot of scavenging. But you don't wanna see things in the 16s or 17s when you're accelerating. But when you're decelerating, we do cut off the fuel on most systems. And when you cut off the fuel, it's pumping air through the engines. And the sensor, we have it set to read a maximum of 20 to one air fuel ratio. So that's basically just air coming through the engine. Don't worry about those conditions. But for the other conditions, 
make sure you're getting the airfield ratio to match the target airfield ratio.